Ja, hallo, Benny von Öventura. Wir feiern 30 Jahre Tentipi. Wir sind hier in äh, Arbitsjauer in Nordschweden, Lappland. Und ähm, vor mir sitzt Ben Gran, der Gründer und ähm, Inhaber von Tentipi. Und ich habe die Chance, äh, ihm ein paar Worte zu entlocken. Und ähm, das werden wir jetzt tun. Das Interview wird in Englisch sein. Vergebt mir, wenn ich irgendwas falsch sage. Ich ähm, freue mich sehr auf das Interview. Und ähm, so, let's start. Okay. Um, Bengt, you are CEO and owner and founder of Tentipi. Yeah. Um, can you introduce yourself to our customers? Well, I'm the son of, of uh, mother and, and, and father who, who have a part-time uh, farm. <laughs> and uh, so in the middle of the forest. So I'm born in the middle of the forest. Mm. And... Uh, From there, I get the outdoor, the fire. It's completely natural. It's not a free time thing. It's it's we, we did we use the fire when we need it. That's the situation. So it's not a a lifestyle that you live. It's just like other people go to work or kind of kind of. We learn to use the knife very early and an axe. Yeah. And, and to make fire and to make it safe to not uh, put all the forest on fire mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it was very natural for us was it your father who taught you these skills oh. mm, I think it was both my father and mother both were very very handy yeah. so with my mother I stitched things with my fingers in, in fabrics and with my father it was more wood, wood yeah. parts. and I learned from my, my mom and dad that every, anything could be done yeah. you just need to, to know how to do it it's important skills uh, for being an entrepreneur yeah <laughs> really <laughs> Being proactive instead of reactive person. Yeah, I have all the thoughts that anything could be solved. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, does your family work with you in the company? Or? My wife is working together with me. Okay. As um, a translator. Okay. Was it? So you're a you're a wilderness man uh, in the, at the bottom of your heart. Um, is it a challenge or has it ever been a challenge to combine rough business, uh, you're, you're, you're active in China and all over the world, um, and on the other side being in nature and calm surroundings? Well, it, for sure I have too little time in the forest and on the water that I wished I had, absolutely. But I'm, I'm not addicted to it, so I survive. Okay. Everything is about priority and of course me and Lena, we, we prefer to, to be in the nature when we have a holiday. And we prefer to live in Sunne, which is a small city, so we are close to nature. Okay. We would never live in a big city. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> um, But I've never been a hardcore businessman. Uh, this business has all the time been a big part of the heart and uh, a strong wish to, to make things work rather than a lot of profit. So um, I feel still a lot of passion for, for this, especially when meeting all these customers or Mm. from all over the world mm. with different businesses and, and see the glow in their eyes yeah that really uh, give energy it's at the bottom of my heart i love outdoor lifestyle and yeah. uh, making a fire <laughs> coming together in the tv and sharing time with my family and so 10 tp fits perfectly into this Yeah, so thank you to, <laughs> to have this opportunity to use your products. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the heritage of uh, 10TP. Um, it's uh, combined with the Sami tradition that's here in this surroundings, in this area. Um, how, did you, how did you realize old heritage with a new and modern product? Um, 
what are the origins? Well, the, the origin of uh, our tent style is, of course, Sami. Uh, and that's traditional. The Sami people lived in this during the winter when they followed the reindeer herd. Because uh, the ground was frozen where the herd has, has walked, so they need to go to new ground to dig down the, uh, to the earth and find the grass mm. and moss to eat. Uh, but I, I'm more I'm born uh, together with Sami people because next to our single house, let's say five kilometer away, where my father grew up, it was mixed uh, Sami and, and Swedish people, mm -hmm. and we had a very very normal relationship. Okay. I I didn't I knew there were Sami, but, but it was no tension or something between us and them. Okay. So it was completely natural, mm. and of course that that had built a, a fo foundation of respect. I I figure out it's very very important that I as a Swede never make a surface about the Sami culture, close uh, uh, color combinations, mm. and I I really want to to uh, promote that. Um, mindset to, to our customers okay because I'm sure <coughs> that is the best way to to do good business here yeah because the product in itself and the culture it convey is so deep and profound you don't need to make a circus just yeah. tell true stories yeah that's yeah. all and the customers will understand this yeah if you convey it in a good way yeah I'm yeah. sure they will understand mm. it uh, let's talk about the key values. Um, you said this morning there are three key values. Uh, yeah. It's uh, heritage we've been yes. talking about. Yes. And it's genuine, it's pioneering. Yeah, exactly. Can you tell me something? About well, it was a day we sat down and considered who, who are we? Because when you are doing branding work, you, you, you need to figure out what's our, what are your key messages mm. to present what we really are. And we got around 50 words that we felt this describes who we are. And when we sorted out in, in different uh, boxes, tried to uh, narrow it down, we figured out that all the words fitted in one or three uh, concepts. And mm. the first is heritage. We, of course, it's obvious because this is a many, many hundred years old way of living for the Sami people. So that is the heritage. Uh, and uh, it means also that we take care of uh, our customer both forward and backwards mm. at least it, we tried very hard when we product developed uh, for example uh, accessories we tried to pre predict what could be needed in the future and make uh, uh, fixing points for that mm. and so on mm. and I think that is a, a bit of the heritage and then the ginger in is actually, I said before, I, I'm not a hardcore businessman. Yeah. I, I, most valuable for me is to be able to look my, myself in the mirror and, and feel you're an okay person. Okay. So that is much before business for, for me. Yeah. And I think that has <laughs> formed a company and a culture that uh, people think they can rely on, both uh, our employees and, and our customers and our suppliers. We never, we never f uh, break a prom promise, for example, mm -hmm. even yeah. if it was a very stupid one. <laughs> yeah. So your integrity last, is, a, is yeah. a high value at 10 TP. Yeah, no short winnings. Yeah. Just winning the future because of very good behavior and respect. Mm. And the last word is pioneering. And we have actually created this niche. Yeah. We have created an event industry that didn't exist before us. Yeah. So uh, we, it's a challenge to continue to be pioneering, but we understand that's our future. We need to be that. Mm. Apple did it with the iPod. Yeah. Uh, no one wanted an iPod, but uh, suddenly the, you, you could have one million songs in the pocket or I don't yeah. know exactly the yeah. sentence and the people wanted to have it so yeah, exactly. it's kind of similar here 10 TP I think yeah we hope so yeah. we think we can expand a lot mm. but we have a message to send out to people yeah because 
the biggest problem is to get people in contact with this the first time. If they have slept in our tent one time, yeah. they will know what it is about. Yeah. <laughs> I realize that when I do 10 TP camps um, or I do uh, uh, exhibitions, people come here and say, oh, what? It's, it's an Indian TP. And I say, no, it's a Nordic TP. And there's a fire burning inside, and people are like, what? Yeah. Uh, fire into a tent and you can see uh, you can see the light in the eyes especially in men they yeah. say oh yeah. great thing I, I must have it so I invite them to just touch it to, to just get yeah, into yeah. it exactly okay yeah, there's a vision uh, you, you said this morning uh, about 10 TP can you Say it in your yeah, own the, words. The vision is, is to, to maintain the, uh, the lead in the, this business that we already have. And of course, it's, it's many who have created a new niche that find themselves uh, uh, with a lot of competitors and they are losing. But we will not lose. Yeah. That's the vision to, to not do that. And yeah. we know how to do it also. Yeah. It's uh, because this. Where we have come is built on, on honesty and genuinity yeah. and these ground values. So we will uh, work them more into every aspect of, of the organization, every people working for us. Mm. And that should be the, the future. That okay. also means listening to customers, listening and, and uh, rework the ideas uh, to make them more general to work okay. for, for more mm. people. And, and uh, the vision is also that we should grow uh, through product development, through uh, making uh, tools and other help ways for, for customers to help them prosper. And uh, what was the third one? Yeah, m m it's about develop the market also, of course. Yeah. And we think that we will grow a lot the coming 10 years we will be four times bigger in 11 years from now on okay is this uh, that's uh, the quest next question uh, what's the future of 10 TP next 10 or 20 years yeah well it, it is a lot is about product development yeah because we I have felt that we have failed uh, our customers uh, the need of new products for, for many years. So we need to speed up the product development uh, uh, subject. That's very important. And also to uh, develop more tools to, to be more efficient in marketing. That's very important. Okay. Um, let's talk about the mission of 10TP. What do you want to to bring into the world, into the 10 TP world? That is to, to uh, to have the most uh, effective uh, shelter in, in the world, yeah. but do it with warmth and comfort, yeah. and, and not just a shelter that stands the weather, but also be cozy to live in, yeah. like a home from home. Yeah. I think you you're already there, but um, more people must know it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That, that's true. Um, one last question. This is um, I often get asked by customers um, when we do exhibitions. You have a, um, a company in China that produces adventure mm. tents. Yes, and event tents as well. A, a, a few of them. A few. And um, some people ask uh, high quality product like 10 TP, uh, and high price product as well. Um, how does it fit together with uh, production in China? What's cheap comes from China? Why 10 TP? Mm. And how, how do you. How do you. Yeah. How do you explain that? The story started uh, uh, when we understood we need to cancel our assortment of adventure tents because we cannot afford to uh, 
to do it in Sweden and also also customer to pay the price needed for that when we have retailers. Yeah. So we have one alternative, it, it's, it's to close down or to go abroad to produce them. Okay. So that that's was where it started, we went to Estonia. But uh, I understood that they were even cheaper on other places because we saw the price of, of that competitors took for their products. So we started to investigate and, and went to China and I asked a third party producer to, to do it for us. And we really had problem to with the quality. At that time I understood the only way to do this is to shape my own company. So I, I created my own company, invested money in, in China and uh, employed seven people. And these seven people grow, so today they are uh, 50 people. And what it has meant, actually, the quality has improved since we did move to, to China. Okay. Because uh, we could afford much more quality control because uh, the men power our cost is, is much lower there, of course. So we can have extensive che quality checking and we can have people looking for new materials all the time which we couldn't do in Sweden. Okay. So in fact, uh, most uh, pro outdoor products are produced in China or Vietnam yeah. or, or wherever, uh, even if it's, it's high cost uh, of this product. But they are not having their own factory. That means they can't train their people to have a certain mindset. Yeah. But we could train our people to have a Swedish mindset. And that's not given. We need to know exactly what to demand point by point because they are not raised like us. Yeah. Different culture. Exactly. But it was worse the first years in, in the company. But now, a day, you come into a family, you learn what is the rules are there. Yeah. So they learn by, by, the, by their own people. Okay. So I'm very proud about our production in China. It's a high quality thing. Yeah. And we can do it because we can afford a lot of things we couldn't afford in Sweden. That's an in interesting answer. Thank you. Um, I think we are at the end of the interview. Um, <laughs> a lot of trouble around there. <laughs> yes. uh, not trouble, but uh, noise. <laughs> noise. <laughs> yes. So, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate to work together with you and uh, hope it will continue much more and deeper in the future. I'm very happy to have you in the network. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to meet you.